Dear colleagues, my name is Christian Reich. I am professor for translational research in inflammatory skin diseases at the University Medical Center Hamburg in Germany. Today I want to briefly talk about a study called OPTIMIZE that was conducted between 2015 and 17 at approximately 200 sites all over Europe. The study looked into the value of a more individualized dosing regime with the fully human NTI17A antibody secuclinumab. What was the study design? All patients received the regular dose of secuclinumab until week 24 and then they were randomized based on their clinical response at this point in time. If patients had a PASA 90 response, they were either continued with a regular dose or a more extended dosing regime with secuclinumab every six weeks. If patients were partially responders between PASA 75 and 90, Again, they either continued with a regular dosing regime or received a more intensified dose of secuclinumab given every two weeks. The primary endpoint compared the, the responders at week 24 based on a non-inferiority design at week 52. The main secondary endpoint compared the partially responding patients either treated with a regular dose or receiving the more intensified dosing scheme again at week 52. Now, what were the main findings? The main comparison based on non-inferiority was in the PASI-90 responders at week 24 and non-inferiority could not be established. But as you can see here, there were actually many patients that did quite well with the more extended dosing regime. Subgroup analysis showed that this was particularly true, interestingly, for female patients, for elderly patients and for patients that had already previously been treated with the systemic therapy for their psoriasis. The secondary endpoint, looking into superiority of the more intensified versus the regular dosing regime in partially responding patients at week 24, again superiority could not be established, but you will agree with me that there was a clear trend that the patients with a more intensified dosing regime were doing better. This was particularly true for patients with a weight above 90 kg. As you can see here, the risk difference in this subgroup almost approached 20% at week 52 and this nicely correlated with the trough levels of secuclinumab measured at week 48. So what are the main findings? Well, in this study, the regular dose of secuclinumab every four weeks appeared optimal for patients. And it also became clear that especially high weight patients will benefit probably from a more intensified dosing scheme and that is currently tested in future studies. And also there is a clear trend that we will eventually be able to find subgroups that will do well with a more extended dosing scheme and I would think that this will also be have to be based on a more vigorous definition of responders, probably PASI 100, maybe even on two consecutive time points. So more research is needed. Thank you very much for your attention.